Hello and welcome to today's Daily Connect. And it is good to have you with us. And we continue today to look at prayer and what the Bible says about prayer to help us and inspire us as we seek to develop our prayer lives. Uh, before I start, let me just say thank you to, to all those who have commented, um, sent texts or emails to say uh, that they found these Daily Connects useful and beneficial. Uh, when we speak to a camera like this, we never know just how, who's listening or whether it's useful or not. So having those comments is really encouraging. Thank you. So I want to uh, just follow through on something I was talking about yesterday. And uh, we were talking about over the last two days, wrestling with God uh, and what that means to wrestle with God in prayer. And our verse yesterday was from Colossians 4, verse 12. And it says this, Epaphras, who is one of you and a servant of Christ Jesus, sends greetings. He is always wrestling in prayer for you, that you may stand firm in all the will of God, mature and fully assured. And having looked at the word wrestling, I want to just look at what Epaphras was praying for. He is praying that the Colossi church would stand firm and be mature, would grow to be assured in God's love for them. And I just want to talk today about some of the prayers we see, particularly in from Paul, and focus just on those things that he prayed for. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm praying for someone, I, I pray for things like, you know, I pray that they may be happy, I pray that they may be healed, um, I pray that whatever circumstance that they are struggling with is resolved in some way. Um, I'm praying effectively for some quite often physical, earthly things, which is absolutely not wrong at all. You know, it's good that we pray that. But when you read Paul's prayers particularly, he's praying for other things. And I just want to focus on them and effectively to kind of give you ideas on what you should be praying for, for people that you know, and have uh, on your prayer list and people that you want to pray for regularly. And, you know, just that, 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 uh, what Epaphras prays for is so important, isn't it? He's praying that they would stand firm in the will of God, that they would stay true to their faith, and in staying true to the faith that they would become mature. I wonder how often do you pray for people in your life who perhaps know Jesus, that they may become mature in their faith? See, that doesn't just happen by accident, does it? As we, as we grow in our discipleship, it takes effort and intention. And you've heard me talk about this a lot since I've been in Christchurch. But we should be praying for one another for that too. We should be praying that we, we each grow in faith. And when you start to look at then at Paul's letters, he kind of develops that idea a lot. And all his prayers are powerful prayers. I'd encourage you to, as you um, read through the, the epistles, Paul's epistles, in those times where he seems to break off into prayer, focus on that and just see what he prays for. And I'm just going to draw out a few things in how he prays for the churches that he has responsibility for. And so we're going to start in Ephesians chapter 1, right near the beginning of the chapter. And he says this, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation that you may know him better. That's such a great thing to pray for someone, isn't it? That they might know God better. And we all need that, don't we? This is the thing about some of the things that Paul prays for. These are things that people need. It's not about money or jobs or security or happiness. It's about knowing God better. And for those people who are you are close to in church or other Christians, for those people who are not Christians yet, the one thing you can pray is that they may know God better. And then later in Ephesians, is the first couple of chapters are full of his prayers for the, the church at Ephesus. And later on he says this, I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance, 
and the incomparable great power for us who believe. There's two things that I want to just focus on. He prays for a few things, but two I want to focus on. Firstly, the idea of power. That we, we should understand the power that is available to us. And he, he picks that up later in Ephesians 3, where he says this, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power. Are you praying that for those on your prayer list that they may know and experience and live in the power of God? Not just for you personally, but for those who are maybe Christians in your family, for church members, people in your missional community. Are you praying that they may know, experience and live in the power of God? But in both of those verses, there's, there's another theme where he talks about the the inheritance of the saints in Ephesians, the first reading, he says this, he wants them to know the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. And he picks up that idea of our inheritance in Ephesians 3. And here he's talking about our heavenly resources, what we have available to us as the children of God. And surely that is something that we need to pray for, that we all understand that. And certainly for me, more than anything else, I, I, I need to grow in that. And I need you to pray for me to grow in that. And my experience is that actually very few Christians fully understand what is available to them, their heavenly resources, their glorious inheritance, the riches of heaven. Very few people understand what is available to them. When God is at work in you, all the resources of heaven are available to you. And later in Ephesians 3, as he starts to pray, he says, And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power, there's that word again, together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge. You know, when we try to understand the love of God, it is not something that we can really pick up out of Scripture. We get to understand mentally, intellectually, kind of abstractly what the love of God is like. But that's not the same as experiencing it, is it? And here Paul is praying that they would know, and that word know is not an intellectual knowing, it is a heart knowing. And as you pray for people, I would encourage you, pray that they may know the love of God, that they may know how wide and high and deep it all is. And uh, later in, uh, in another book, he, in 1 Thessalonians 3, he talks about how he prays that the Thessalonian church would abound and increase in love for one another. See, it's not simply just knowing the love of God, it's about loving one another. And if you are ever stuck for something to pray for, pray that our church may know what it means to love one another. Because no church is perfect in that regard, is it? We all struggle. We never quite get that right. We need to be praying for each other for this, that we may all know the love of God and what it means to love each other. Let me pick up a, a prayer he prays in Colossians 1 uh, verses 9 to 10 he says this we have not ceased to pray for you isn't that lovely he is continually praying for them asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so as to walk in a manner worthy of the lord fully pleasing to him he is praying that they may live their life in a way that pleases god but the way that they do that is by knowing the will of god and we all need that too, don't we? The people around you in church need to understand what God's will is for their life. And related to that, and quite often in his prayers, he talks about that they may know his purpose. And we again, that is something that we all struggle with. See, these are things that we can all pray for for every single person. It's not about just knowing what they need at that time. You could be praying for someone who's in a really happy place they're financially secure, their future is secure, and 
you can pray these things because I can guarantee that they are struggling to fully understand the love of God, that they are struggling to understand the will of God for their life. These are perhaps the most important things that we can be praying for because some of the the physical, earthly things that we pray about are only temporary. The things that Paul prays for here are eternal. And that's the, that's the thing about prayer, isn't it? That it's not just about someone being healed next week. It's not about someone getting a new job. It's not simply about someone being financially secure or discovering happiness or whatever. Our prayers have an eternal perspective and an eternal result. And as we pray for these things, that is, that's the outcome. And so I would encourage you, pick up on some of these things that Paul prays. There are a whole bunch of prayers that Paul prays in his epistles. I would encourage you to research them. Look at what he prays for and you'll see similar themes coming up time and time again. That they may know God better. That they may know his love. That they may know the riches of his grace and their uh, their heavenly inheritance. That they may learn to love one another and to be in unity. That they may know power. And that they may know what they are called to do here on earth. Those are the constant ideas Paul prays for. Why not start to make a list of them as you go through your Bible readings, as you kind of look through Scripture? When you see what Paul prays for, make a, make a list and use that then to pray for people that, who are on your prayer list. It will change how you see prayer. Because it will make your prayer not simply about the here and here and now, not simply about the temporary needs that those people have, but about the eternal perspective that we all need to have for every single person in our lives. Let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you for Paul and I thank you, Lord, for the way that he prayed. And I thank you, Lord, that he is an inspiration to us. Help us, Lord, to learn from Paul and how he prayed so that they, that may better inform our prayers. Lord, we want our prayers to have eternal consequences. So Lord, help us to pray like Paul and to pray that people may know you better. Amen. It's been so good to have you with us today. Do please join us tomorrow as we continue to look at prayer.